Welcome everybody to this tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to create your very own bootloader from scratch. It will boot up on your computer and it will say hello world. Now we're going to be creating this in assembly language. Now don't worry if you don't know assembly language, just follow along and you'll have a working example. You can find the full video course in the description, but you will not need the full video course to complete this video. You will have a working bootloader by the end of this video. We'll be using the Ubuntu operating system for this demonstration. In your terminal, write sudo apt install nasm. Enter your password and go through the setup. NASM is a 32-bit and 64-bit assembler that can also assemble 16-bit code. I've created a file called boot.asm and for this demonstration I will be using Visual Studio Code. Inside your boot.asm file, do brackets bit 16. This signifies to NASM assembler that all code beneath this will be 16-bit code. We're going to create a start label. Here we're going to say move AX UX 7 C0. We're going to say move DS AX, move SS AX, move ES AX. This just sets up the segment registers to use the segment 0x7 C0. In the Intel 8086 architecture, the 16-bit segmentation allows you to address up to 1 megabyte of memory by splitting the 1 megabyte of memory into segments and offsets. The segment registers are used to help calculate an absolute offset that you're accessing. For example, if you're accessing offset 50 and the segment is 0x7c0, the math that will be performed will be 0x70 multiplied by 16 equals 0x7c00 plus 50 decimal. And this will be the absolute address. Okay? It doesn't matter if you don't understand that right now because you're learning kernel development. This is your first lesson. You can find the full course in the video description. Let's continue. So now we want to create a print routine that will allow us to print out a message. So we're just going to say print here. And we're also going to just above it do jump dollar, which basically means jump to line 11 forever. This is essentially an infinite loop. So this print label will never be run. Without doing this jump, as we're executing down here, we'll end up running into the print label. Because the print label is not a function, it's just a label within the code. So the execution goes down all the way here, and it stops here where it jumps to itself. This protects it from executing the print function when we don't want it to. So just in here, we're going to say move ah 0 eh So 0 e hexadecimal allows us to access the print routines in the BIOS, okay? The AL register will contain the character that we wish to output, such as A, B, C, D. You can find a video on general purpose registers on our channel, okay? So don't miss that if you are confused with what's going on here. Just above here, we're going to say LOD SB. Now this instruction will just load the next character from memory, okay? And it uses the SI register with the data segment to accomplish that. That will be shown to you shortly. Since LODSB has now loaded the character into the AL register, we can now check to see if it's zero or null terminator. So we say compare AL zero. And if that is true, then it's a null terminator because everyone knows zero is null terminator. So we're going to jump to done. Now in the done label, we'll just return. Nice and simple. Otherwise, down here, the code will keep running on line 16. And we'll just run interrup 0x10, which is the BIOS video routine. This will output the character that has been loaded in the AL register from the LOD SB instruction. Obviously, after we've loaded the character, we need to loop back around and load the next one. So we can just say jump dot continue, or dot, uh, we can just say dot con, and then under print we can say dot con. So we make a little sub label there. So now what's going to happen is when someone calls print, it'll load the next character. It'll check if it's zero. If it's zero, we're done. Okay. And then it will jump to done, which will return from the subroutine. Otherwise, we set AH to ZUEH and we output the character with 0x10. And the character 
is in the AL register. It was loaded with LOD SB. Okay, down here now we're going to have our message. So we're going to say message colon, and we're going to say DB, hello world. And don't forget that null terminator at the end. Okay, so that's our message. Now if we go further up, just after setting the segmentation registers, we can say move SI message. So that moves the address of message or the offset of message, I should say, into the SI register. Okay. And then we're going to say call print. And that should output our message. Okay. So remember the math involved, the data segment multiplied by 16 plus SI. So that is the address that is calculated when you call lot SB. So it will be 0x7c00, okay, plus the offset of message. And the offset of message is in the SI register. Lot SP requires the SI register point to the label where we next want to load the byte from. Finally, at the very top, we're going to say org0. And this just sets the origin of the file. And it'll essentially mean that any label offsets are prepended with zero. This is the base offset. Next, we need to create our boot signature. Now, our boot signature exists for our BIOS. Our BIOS will search for a boot signature in our hard disk. When it finds it, it will load that into the address 0x7c00 in RAM, which is why we have to set the, these segment registers this way. And it will then begin executing address 0x7c00. It can't do that without a boot signature. Without a boot signature, it doesn't know this is bootable code. So we're going to come down here. We're going to do times 510 minus bracket dollar minus dollar dollar db0. Now what this does, this tells the assembler we should uh, fill all the available memory up to 510 bytes with zero, except the code that's already here. So it'll calculate the, the size of all this code up to line 28. It'll subtract it by 510, or it'll subtract that value uh, from 510, I should say. And then the remainder will be filled with zeros. So you're guaranteed on line 30, after line 30 runs, or, or is assembled, I should say, to be at offset 510. You are guaranteed. And the reason we need to do that is because the boot signature has to be on the last two bytes of the sector. And a sector on a hard disk is 512 bytes generally, which is why we're doing it like this. So now you're going to say DW 0xAA55. So this is called our boot signature. This is what the BIOS will look for when it tries to boot us. Okay, so we're now going to compile our bootloader. We're going to say nasm-f bin for binary, because it's not an object file, dot forward slash boot dot asm, which is our assembly file name. Press enter. And now if you do ls-l, you'll see all the files, and we can see this new boot file. Now this is compiled machine code, okay, or assembled machine code, I should say. The boot dot asm file has been assembled into a series of opcodes that can run directly on the CPU. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to boot this file with an emulator so I can show you how it looks. You could boot this on your real machine if you wrote it directly to your hard disk, which I don't recommend doing because you'll ruin your current operating system. So if you're going to do that, use an old computer. And it has to be an old computer because generally they're not the same format that is required in modern times. So all the hardware will run these uh, legacy bootloaders better. So what we're going to say, we're going to say qmu dash system dash i386 dash hda dot forward slash boot. So obviously you'll need to install qmu emulator if you wish to run this on an emulator. And we're going to press enter. And you can see here, hello world. So if I just zoom in, you can see hello world. So this is bootable code. What you've done is just wrote the start of your very own operating system. Now, if you really want to make your own operating system from scratch, I have a video course in the description. It's a bestseller worldwide. It will teach you how to build a multi-threaded kernel completely from scratch. So go and get it now while the discounts are still applied.